In tone, the library is very much a continuation of the dormitory. It's short, quiet, and relaxed. In terms of gameplay, it actually functions as a nice sort of test of what you've learned thus far. In a relatively short space, we'll encounter pretty much every gameplay mechanic that's been introduced. It's about here that the game starts picking up in difficulty. Timed sections get tighter, enemies get put in more enclosed spaces, and we'll need to be a lot more precise with our platforming and beam skills if we want to find all the secret constellations and souvenirs. Here's an example of the timing. The view cone on that camera is actually just low enough to catch Kurt's fat ass if we tried to crawl under it, so we have to move it up with the beam. And with how long it takes to travel between vents, it can be quite easy to not make it there in the 9 seconds that a beam lasts for. And here's some of the more advanced beam skills. There's some bombs underneath the rotating block, and this is the only way to get them without dying. Something interesting about Pid's art style that isn't immediately apparent is that the game doesn't have a single texture. Everything is just coloured polygons, lighting and shader effects. This is how the game is achieving its look of obviously being three-dimensional, yet having a certain flatness to it that isn't quite cell shading. I have to imagine not needing to worry about the textures must have made things at least a little easier on the one 3D artist that worked on the game. Passing that door is a point of no return should we die, so before we do that, there's something up here we need to pick up. If you're not one for identifying constellations, that's a sunflower in a pot, and it's more annoying to pick up than difficult, as you'll see here.
The music box pops up a lot in hidden areas, and I'm pretty sure it's possible to never pick it up throughout the game. It's certainly not required for any section, it's basically just a set of training wheels, or a panic button for when there's too much going on. Right, here we have the section of the game that, when I first played Pid, made me realise just how hard the game is willing to make you work for its secrets. First is setting this switch up, which I did incorrectly here for some reason. Once the switch is active, we need to get up to this spring underneath the door that opens. And here I was trying to progress in a way that doesn't put me at risk of getting killed, but the spring just would not cooperate. By hitting the jump just before bouncing off of a spring, you should get extra height, which in this case would put you on the white blocks in the air. That didn't happen. After that failed several times, I just went ahead with the risky option, which is to pull over to the left as hard as possible, hit the switch in mid-air and land on the platform that appears. And then it gets tricky. There is absolutely no time to waste with that switch, and if you miss with the beam even once, you might as well kill yourself. At this point, you're probably wondering what could possibly be at the end of this path. Or you might have guessed what it is already. After all, it just wouldn't be right to leave without checking out a book. This is one of the three hardest souvenirs in the game, and in my opinion, it's the easiest of the three. But that's for later. Not much further now, just a quick tutorial for the spring, in spite of how self-explanatory it is, and then we'll be outside. As a side note, has anyone noticed how we've been climbing higher and higher? Uh, yes, I'd like to check this book out, please. Hello? Hello? Hey, are you even paying attention? Come on, jumping around, making a lot of noise. Nothing? Magic gravity beam, magic gravity beam, jumping child with a magic gravity beam. Come on, you have no idea what I went through to get this book. Pay attention to me! You know what? Screw that guy. <laughs> 